the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation brings you Crime Photographer. <laughs> Where'd you get the black eye, Ethelbert? At a concert. A, a concert? What were you doing? I was just telling this fellow we have better music at the Blue Note Cafe. Mm -hmm. And? He turned out to be the conductor's brother. Ooh, well, that'll teach you a lesson, Ethelbert. When you're with strangers, it's safer to talk about something everyone agrees on. Like what, for instance? Like Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tony Marvin. Every week at this time, the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, and its more than 10,000 employees bring you another adventure of Casey, crime photographer, ace cameraman who covers the crime news of a great city. Written by Alonzo Dean Cole, our adventure for tonight, Bright New Star. <laughs> Late afternoon, a Metropolitan Theater. Its auditorium is empty and its half-lighted stage is bare, except for several dozen folding chairs and a few rough tables that have been used for a rehearsal. In the center of the stage stands a smiling young woman surrounded by newspaper reporters and photographers. Among them, Anne Williams and Casey. Uh, uh, tilt your head up just a little more, Miss Holliday. It'll give you a better neckline. Uh, make the smile a little wider, please. <laughs> I'll try, gentlemen. That's it. Uh, hold it. There. Now sit down and cross your legs. Huh? Yeah, we want a little cheesecake. <laughs> All right. Will this do? Uh, pull the skirt a little higher. <laughs> like this? Uh, that's well. Say, you photographers get out of the way and give us reporters a chance. Danny, you can take over as far as I'm concerned. I wasted enough good super pan press film on this publicity buildup. I think, um... She's pretty, Casey. Sure, but I think she'd double-cross her own mother in order to get what she wants. Mm, she'll be getting what any woman would want when this play opens tomorrow night. Her name and lights and... Well, if she's half as good as the rave notices she got on the out-of-town tryout, she'll be the biggest smash we've had for a long time. Mm, yeah. Well, go on over and get your interview. I'll have a gab with Hartley Owens. Oh, he's a nice old thing. I'm glad he's finally got what seems an assured success in this play. Yeah, so am I. He must have been down to his last half a shoestring when he got his mitts on this comedy. Well, I'll get over to this bright new star and hear her throbbing success story. Yeah. Join you later. Okay, Annie. Hello, Mr. Owens. Well, hello, Casey. It was nice of all you newspaper boys and girls to come here today and give me this break. <laughs> you made sure we'd give you this break. <laughs> You mean the insurance story? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a corny old publicity gag, Mr. Owens, but it always works. When we got the release about you insuring your new star for a quarter of a million bucks and then verified the truth of it, well, it made good copy. Well, the $250,000 life insurance policy I took out on Sandra Holliday wasn't merely a bid for publicity, Casey. Huh? That little girl over there in my play, I've got an SRO hit that'll make me several millions. Without her... I've got another turkey. She's good as all that, huh? She's sensational. Your press agent said you discovered her in a Chicago night spot, but he soft-pedaled beyond that. What's the dope on her? Well, strictly off the record, Casey, she was entertaining in a pretty low dive when I found her. One of Murray Solano's places. Uh-oh. I knew Solano when he was running a clip joint in this town. It was a honey. Uh, so is Solano. I'm very much afraid... Afraid of what? Of complications. Huh? Solano's crazy about this girl. He wants to marry her. Ooh. Well, if she does, the publicity will wreck both her and your show. You know, among other assorted crimes and misdemeanors, that guy's strongly suspected of a couple of murders. Well, she won't marry him. As a matter of fact, Sandra's even more anxious to get rid of him than I am. But Solano has money, Casey. He was helpful to her before I took her out of his place. And I think that... She had encouraged him a little too much. Mm. Now it's going to be hard to give him a brush off. Very hard. He's followed her here. He even managed to get a suite at the Quarterly Blenheim where she's stopping and on the same floor. 
Sandra wishes to be completely free of him. She's temperamental and impulsive. If she doesn't handle the situation wisely, he might get nasty. Yeah, he will. Murray Solana was born nasty. Hello, Hartley. Well, good afternoon, Bernice. Our dear little Sandra seems to be having a most enjoyable session with the newspaper people. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, Bernice, allow me to present Mr. Casey of the Morning Express. Uh, Casey, this is my other great star, Miss Rolfe. Well, it's a great pleasure to meet you, Miss Rolfe. I've admired your acting a long time. Thank you. You're a photographer, Mr. Casey? Yes. Then why aren't you taking pictures of Mr. Owen's sensational discovery? Well, I've already taken some. I I'd like to shoot several of you, Miss Rolfe. That's if... diplomatic, uh, Bernice, you, Hartley... my dear, uh, you know. Yes, Hartley. I know. Good day, Mr. Casey. Well, so long, Miss Rolfe. Hmm. Her nose is out of joint, huh? Oh, she's terribly jealous of Sandra. When this play went into rehearsal, Bernice was engaged for what then seemed to be the stellar role. But when the writers and my... Other associates in the production saw what we had in Sandra. Her part was lengthened and developed, and Bernice's was cut. If I hadn't had her signed to an ironclad contract, she'd have walked out on me. Mm. Must be pretty hard for her to take. Bernice Rolfe's an established star, and to have an unknown come in and take all the gravy. Well, it made her rather poisonous, to say the least. Yeah. Bernice has rooms at the courtly Blenheim, too, on the same floor as Sandra and Solano and me. I'm going to have a time preserving peace there as well as at the theater. Say, isn't that Solano coming in? Oh, yes. I haven't seen him in a long time. He's put on a lot Hi, of weight. Owens. Hello. Well, Casey, long time no see. Yes, long time, Solano. Been shooting pictures of Sandra, huh? She is something, ain't she? A bombshell, from what I'm told. A guy with eyes shouldn't have to be told. After my first look at her, Casey, I knew she had everything. You've known her for some time? Not long enough. See, Owens, I figured it'd make Sandra feel good if I threw a party in her honor tonight. You know, give her a big send-off of flowers and champagne, wish her success. So I've made arrangements at the Silver Club. Uh, no, know. Mr. Solano, I told you there'd be no parties tonight. Tomorrow night's our opening, and Sandra must have complete rest until then. Not with that rest stuff. That kid likes excitement, hey, Sandra? Yes? I want to talk to you a minute. I'm terribly busy. Uh, excuse me, go. Casey, I've got to make sure she doesn't... Yeah, I'll go with you, Mr. Owens. Ditch those newspaper characters for a minute and get an earful of what I've cooked up. I'm throwing a big party for you tonight, kid. Mr. Owens doesn't want me to go out this evening. So what? Now, here's what we're going to do, babe. How dare you call me babe? Huh? Mr. Solano, you neither know me long enough nor well enough to call me babe. <laughs> of course, this is an act, kid. It is not an act. I want you to leave me alone. Ah, I thought your head has been getting bigger and your hat's a little higher. Mr. Ever since... Owens, please have this man put out of the theater. Sandra, put me out, huh? Isn't that plain enough that I don't want to see you anymore? Yeah. It is now. Come on, babe. Thanks for finally giving it to me straight, just how I stand. Sandra, you shouldn't have done that. Not the way you did. I told you I was fed up with him, Mr. Owens. And uh, you wanted him out of the way. But Solano's dangerous. He I'm might... not afraid of him. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, sorry this unpleasant scene had to occur before you. Now, uh, as I was telling you reporters, I was brought up in uh, an exclusive section of uh, uh, Pittsburgh. My father worked in a bank. Probably a and gravel bank. Casey. What do you suppose the lowdown is on that Solano person? I'll tell you when we get out of here, Annie. Come on, let's go. Okay. So long, Mr. Owens. Uh, Casey. Yeah? Uh, Would you excuse us a moment, Miss Williams? Mm, certainly. Um, Casey, you're an old friend, so I know everything I've told you will be off the record. This opening tomorrow night, the success of my new star means everything to me. The wrong sort of publicity at this time. Yes, I'd yes, say. I understand. Well, don't worry. Nothing to hurt your show will get into the Express, and the people here from other papers are young in the racket. They don't know Solano. Oh, thanks. You think he might try to harm Sandra? Yeah. It was pretty rough, the way she gave him the gate. Solano's going to be plenty burnt. Look, um, why don't you play safe and get her a bodyguard? I shall. Hmm. That'll be good for publicity. Yeah. You would think of that, Hank. <laughs> Second nature, my boy. But seriously, until I secure guards for the job, I'll keep very close watch over her myself. Well, that'll be easy since you're stopping at the same hotel. 
Well, so long, Mr. Owens. And so long, Casey. I'm sorry, Mr. Owens. Miss Sandra Holliday doesn't answer her telephone. Well, I'm sure she's in her suite operator, probably sleeping soundly. She has a breakfast appointment with me this morning, and I promised to wake her with a call, so please try again. Very well, Mr. Owens. <laughs> Don't waste time knocking at that door, man. Open it. If I use my pass key on Miss Holliday's door, you must take the responsibility, Mr. Owens. Ladies don't usually like it when house detectives barge in. I'll her. take all responsibility. I tell you, I've been trying to rouse her by phone for almost half an hour. Don't be worried, sir. She may have gone out. I told her not to go out. Open that door. Here you are, sir. But nothing ever happens to people in this hotel. <gasps> Merciful Lord. Sandra. Sandra. Her head's all bashed in. She, she's dead. Dead before she could open tonight. I've lost at least a million dollars. You can think of, of money at a time like this? Yes. And of paying off the man I think has robbed me of it. He's in this hotel on this floor. If he hasn't run away, call the police and then arrest Murray Solano. <laughs> Our story will continue in just a moment. Want to make your folks' mouths water with a surefire dessert? Then let it be homemade pie and set it on the table in a gleaming anchor hocking oven glass pie plate. Its fluffy light brown crust will give a tempting hint of the goodness within. Peaches, berries, or creamy lemon meringue. And those delicious pies will be even better when baked in a Fire King oven glass pie plate because they bake all the way through. And after the last delicious piece is tucked away, that beautiful Fire King oven glass plate washes clean in a jiffy. Now, right now, your favorite five and ten cent store and all other stores selling household glass are featuring an unusual bargain, a big nine and one half inch Fire King oven glass pie plate at only 25 cents, slightly more in distant cities. Be sure to get your Fire King oven glass pie plate now while the supply lasts. You'll enjoy it for years, because like all Fire King oven glass, it's guaranteed for two years against oven breakage. Ask for Fire King oven glass by name. Another product of Anchor Hocking. The most famous name in glass. This house detective went to Solano's rooms right after you phoned me at headquarters, Mr. Owens? Yes, Captain. Solano wasn't there. The guy left in such a hurry, Captain Logan. He took nothing but the clothes he was wearing. Which means that after he killed Sandra, he lost no time in making his getaway. Casey, have you told Captain Logan what happened at the theater yesterday? Yes, on our way here, I happened to be in Logan's office when the murder report came in. Are you, uh, house detective, what's your name? Bannon, sir. Have you made any check on Solano's movements, Bannon? Yes, Captain. He was last seen coming into the hotel about 12 o'clock last night. And no one remembers seeing him leave again after that. I'll put my men checking on that. Well, until the medical examiner gets here and gives me the lowdown, I guess this woman's been dead about eight hours uh, since uh, 2 o'clock this morning. And yeah, that's my guess, too, Logan. I'm glad to have your support, Casey. <laughs> Happy to give it to you, Bob. Yeah. And the murder instrument was obviously that heavy brass candlestick from which somebody has carefully removed all the fingerprints. Well, a guy like Solano would remember to do that. Yeah, but would, uh, would Solano have used a candlestick? Why not? Ah. I can see him giving her the business with a gun or his fist about choking her to death. If he'd used a gun, the shot would have been heard. Yes, I know that, but I don't know. The picture doesn't seem just right. And how did he get in here between midnight and two in the morning? Well, I think Sandra let him in herself, Casey. Perhaps because I instructed her not to do so under any circumstances. You saw yesterday how headstrong she was, and she had no fear of Solano. I thought you were going to get guards for her, Mr. Rose. I did. Men from the Phoenix Detective Agency would be close to her every minute after this morning. After this morning? Well, Sandra had promised me she wouldn't leave her suite... Until she accompanied me to breakfast, Captain. I was foolish enough to think she'd be safe there. I'm a man who makes big mistakes. I've made nothing else during the last half dozen years. 
Now, I've made my biggest and lost a fortune. Uh, your show has no chance without Miss Holiday, huh? None whatsoever. Oh, if my stockholders insist, I'll put in another actress and give the thing a showing here, but they'll be wise if they let it drop and console themselves with the return of their investments from the insurance I took out on San Andres' life. Oh, your stockholders share in that $250,000 policy. Well, naturally. It takes them from all loss. Hey, who are your stockholders? Why, uh, that's a private business matter, Captain. There can be no privacy where murder is concerned. Yes, you're right. Well, as you're probably aware, Captain, conservative businessmen rarely wish it known that they invest in anything as speculative as a theatrical venture. So I must ask you and Casey to treat the information you've requested as confidential. Oh, certainly, sure. R.G. Whipple, the banker, is my chief backer. State Senator Pearson is the other. Ah, thanks. Now, I have to ask a lot of personal questions in a case of this sort, Mr. Owens. Well, I trust that I'm not under any suspicion. This investigation of my affairs will show you I had every reason to keep Sandra Holliday alive. Yes, I believe that, Mr. Owens. But um, Murray Solano may not have been the only person who would have liked to have seen her dead. What? You think somebody else? Bernice Rolfe wasn't exactly a friend of Miss Holliday. Bernice. Jealous women can be as murderous as jilted men. Oh, Casey, I'm sure that Bernice... Hey, what's this about? Well, Mr. Owens can give you the details better than I can, Logan. And after he gets through, I think there's an actress you want to talk to. An old star who didn't like being outshone by a new one. wants another mint julep, and we're all out of mint. I'll get some right away, Uncle Bert. Yeah, uh, make him the julep when you do. Okay. Joe just lets things go behind this bar. <laughs> Joe does. Well, sure, Miss Williams. I'm not supposed to do everything. Huh, everything. Uh, now, go on with what you were saying, Casey. Uh, Captain Logan didn't get anything out of Bernice Rolfe, huh? No, nothing. Nothing except denials, pal. She had every opportunity last night to make a round trip from her rooms in that hotel to Miss Holiday's suite. As a member of the show, Holiday would naturally have let her come in. But Miss Rolfe says she didn't go near Sandra Holiday's suite last night. And nobody saw her go near it. Well, nobody saw Solano go near it either, Annie. Nobody saw anybody go near it, did they? Well, apparently not. Well, I think it's a waste of time to suspect anyone but Solano. The simple fact that he sneaked out of that hotel and that he's hiding from the cops now is his proof of his guilt. Annie, that's circumstantial evidence. You don't believe Solano did the job, huh, Casey? Well, Ethelbert, I'm trying to keep an open mind about him. The guy, of course, is a lousy racketeer. He's a suspected killer. But he's never shown the kind of a yellow streak that a guy must have before he beats a woman's brains out and from behind her back at that. Oh, I don't know. I'm probably all wrong. Logically... He's the guy, but... Well, uh, I have a hunch. Uh-oh. One of them things again, huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Placing any bets on it? I got a couple of bucks in my pocket that ain't working. Yeah, well, keep it there. My common sense tells me this hunch is wrong. Mm. I'll uh, take that $2 bet, Ethelbert. Huh? On Casey's hunch being right, Miss Williams? On his common sense being wrong. I'll always bet on that. Annie, what do you mean by The that? bet's two bucks his hunch is right because his common sense is wrong. Mm -hmm, that's it. It's a deal. But remember, in past experience, I think I've stuck my neck out for the losing end. Oh, yeah? Casey, as my sister Edna says, quote, people are like onions. They usually repeat. Pardon me. I mean, unquote. Oh, my admiring friend. <laughs> How's Hartley Owens taking the whole thing, Casey? Everybody says he'd be riding high again if his show could open with that girl. Well, he's taking it like any guy would who lost a potential million or two. He'll collect on that big insurance policy, of course. Only a small part of it, 20%. 50 grand is peanuts to what he would have made on the show with Sandra Holliday. Who gets the other 80%? His backers. Who'll make plenty on their investments. Say, 
Maybe one of them backers figured insurance dough was more sure than that show being a hit. Ah, no, and... no, no, no. Forget oh. it, forget it. Logan, check the backers. They're both very rich, very law-abiding guys who wouldn't have and couldn't have killed Sandra Holliday. How can you say that Big Jim Maxson is law-abiding? Why, he ain't even very rich. Big Jim Maxson? What about him? Who runs Maxson's tavern? I know. You know, he's in the rackets, Casey. Well, and what's he... Big Jim Maxson got to do with it? He's one of Hartley Owens backers. What? Big Jim... He... Oh, you're nuts. He told me he was. Said he bought 20% of the show for 10 grand. He... He told you? Only a couple of nights ago. He asked me to keep it confidential, kind of that hard-boiled wife of his wouldn't approve. And he said that Heine Troutman, the gambler, had 20% too. Casey, hey, this hey, may mean that... Annie, sure, sure... Look, c- come on. We're going to find Logan. Then call on Big Jim and Heine Troutman. Why, Casey? Well, when when we have time to tell you, pal, I, I think it is, it's going to cost two bucks. Two bucks. Two bucks? Your bet to me, Ethelbert. Against Casey's hunch. Sit down, gentlemen. No, thanks, Mr. Owens. We won't be here very long. Uh, neither will you, Mr. Owen. Uh, I, Casey? Uh-huh. Nice suite of rooms he has, Logan. He's going to miss it. Uh, I don't understand. This afternoon, I called on the backers of your show whose names you gave me, Mr. Whipple and Mr. Pearson. I'm sure they confirmed everything I told you. They did, 100%. Yeah, but tonight we made other calls on Big Jim Maxson. Maxson? And Heine Troutman. I don't know what you... Oh, yes, you do. You sold 140% of your show, Owens. You expected the show to be a flop, which would mean no payoffs to anybody but yourself. Make sure it would be a flop. You put an unknown entertainer into one of the big parts. But she made your turkey into a hit. If she'd opened here in the big town, you'd have been called upon to pay out 40% more than the show could bring in. To two hard-boiled businessmen and two tough racketeers. When you got the bright idea of insuring Miss Holiday's life, the business guys with their lawyers made you sign over an interest in the policy to the extent of the shares they'd bought, 80%. But in the deal you made with Maxson and Troutman, you merely had to return their invested dough, $20,000, if Miss Holiday's death made the insurance collectible. So, to keep yourself from being sent to jail by the business guys or being rubbed out by the racketeers when they got wise that you'd sold them watered stock... And to still make 30 grand out of your swindle, it had backfired... You killed Sandra Holliday. You may as well admit it, Owens. But, uh, Solano killed her. Solano did it. You made it look that way. Oh, he was to be your fall guy. Yeah, stick out your wrist, Owens. I've got a pair of bracelets for you. Oh, no. Look, yeah, give me that gun. If either of you take a step, I'll shoot. You think I came here to arrest a murderer without posting ten men in the hall outside to cover us? Nobody's going to get me. There's an extension roof only a floor below these windows. I'll jump and get away. You're crazy. Maybe I am crazy. So crazy I'm going to kill both of you. He's going to shoot me. Wait. No! Ah! Oh, it's on the floor. Well, who fired? I shot the rat, Captain. Solano. Yeah, Casey. You're okay. Just getting my mitt won't do you and Captain Logan any damage. Oh, thanks. Yeah, a million. <laughs> Funny. I never thought I'd save the life of a cop and a newspaper guy, but uh, things don't always happen the way we figure. You know, we've just found that out. Tell me, how did you get in this room? <laughs> That's funny, too. I was coming along the hall this morning when I heard Owens and that house dick talking in Sandra's suite. I heard him say she was dead. And Owens said I'd killed her. Knowing how I stand with cops and having no alibi... I did a quick duck through another open door into here. You've been hiding out in Owens' suite? You cops never bothered to look for me in the rooms of the guy who'd set you to hunting me. And he didn't know I was here. Any more than I knew he was the rat who killed Sandra. <laughs> funny all around. Mm, funny. Wouldn't have been funny for Logan and me if you hadn't been here. That maniac had the drop on us. We hadn't a chance. Maniac, huh? You heard him. He was crazy. Uh, the Owens is coming, too. Uh, you didn't kill him, Solano. Yeah, I'll get a doctor for him. At, uh, uh, first, give me your gun, Solano. Casey and I are thankful you had one and used it as you did. I'm but... keeping this gun. Huh? It's got a little job to do. Solano. The rat who turned my girl against me and then killed her isn't going to die of old age in an asylum. Solano! Give me that gun. You fool. You 
can have the gat now, Captain. You're under arrest, Solano, for murder. Sure, Captain. Funny, ain't it? The way you finally pinned me for a rap in the hot seat. <laughs> We'll join the crowd at the Blue Note in just a moment. If you enjoy really good beer, the most important thing to look for, aside from the label, is the kind of container it comes in. Be sure it's a bottle, a glass bottle, for glass and only glass can bring you beer and ale the way it's meant to taste with no foreign flavor. Now today, you can buy beer and ale in a brand new kind of glass bottle, so light and compact, so inexpensive to brewers, that it requires no deposit. Yes, sir, never again will you have to worry about those extra pennies or about returning empties to the store. Simply enjoy your favorite beer or ale, and when the bottle is empty, throw it away. This amazing new one-way bottle is a natural for picnics. It looks well on any table. For beer that's brewery bright, demand a glass bottle. And for convenience, demand your favorite brand in the Anchor Glass One-Way No Deposit Bottle. A product of Anchor Hawking. The most famous name in glass. It was funny, Casey, how Solano was finally got for murder. Hmm. Well, I'm not laughing about it, Ethelbert. No, he saved Casey's life. And Logan's. Well, not only that, he... Well, hmm. Solano's a bad guy. He's deserved a life sentence or, or the chair for a long time, but... but... No, oh, nuts, I don't know. Say, Ethelbert, hmm? I just remembered. You owe me two dollars on that bet. Yeah, my hunch was right. Terrible hot weather we've been having, ain't it? My two dollars, Ethelbert. Yeah, I hope it's cooler tomorrow. What'd you say, Miss Williams? You know, Ethelbert, a better always pays up promptly. Yeah, when it's cooler, it'll be much better. Crime Photographer, starring Stotts Cotsworth as Casey, is brought to you each Thursday by the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation, makers of Fire King Oven Glass, Anchor Glass Containers, Anchor Caps and Closures, all products of Anchor Hawking, the most famous name in glass. Photographer is directed by John Deets. The original music is by Archie Blyer, and the program features Miss Jan Minor as Anne and John Gibson as Ethelbert. The part of Hartley Owens was played by Roger DeCoven. Herman Chittison is the Blue Note pianist. Tomorrow, August 1st, is the 40th anniversary of the Army Air Forces. Anchor Hawking joins in saluting the men of this great organization and in reminding the nation they serve that air power is peace power. This is Tony Marvin saying good night for the Anchor Hawking Glass Corporation of Lancaster, Ohio, with offices in all principal cities of the United States and Canada. Thursday night on CBS is the biggest show in town, so stay tuned for exciting dramatizations on Reader's Digest Radio Edition, which follows immediately over most of these stations. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.